All right, here we go. Find our stool marker. Alrighty, y'all, let's do this. Alright, we all ready? Mm-hmm. Alright, welcome everybody to another edition of Bears and Dragons. Skipped last week because I wasn't feeling great. But here we are, we're back. We're a bunch of nerdy-ass bears who like to sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Dungeons and Dragons. Um... Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, uh, it got you. Previously on Bears and Dragons, what happened last time? We finally made it to Gracklestug. <gasps> yes. Uh, we did some little errands that we had to take care of due to past promises that we made. Um, and we kind of went and rested and stuff. And the next day we decided to do a little shopping. So in the the lower ward, I guess you would call it, didn't have much for us in the way of gear and all. It's kind of very commonplace stuff. Uh, but while we were um, shopping, a giant stormed through the gate, broke down the gate and all. We took care of it really quick. Pretty quick. And then... A bunch of people afterwards told us that we, they needed to talk to us. The guards wanted to talk to us, kind of get our account for everything. So the giants, I guess the clan where the giant came from, like wanted to kind of think, like talk to us about it too. And then a cleric said that their person they report to and all wants to talk to us. Like it seems like he was a pretty heavy hitter, so we went with them. We traveled through town, going through gates, into places where you kind of been warned not to go. But you were being escorted by a door guard. Door guards look, must have looked uh, pretty special or something. Uh, you don't know. You haven't been here before. before no, and you not. come and you come to a cavern down on the... Uh, is, that, is that the south side of the city? Do I guess have so, a, yeah. Yeah. North is up. <laughs> yep. There's the marker. North side of the city. South side of the city. As the Dorgar priests lead you to a building carved by the stone, just outside a huge cave entrance, the ground trembles slightly, and a thunderous voice echoes against every wall. Guard to guard! The voice calls as a reptilian behemoth comes into view. It scales the color of lava, its bright yellow eyes glowing in the shadows of the cave before coming into the light. You didn't say I was having surfaces for dinner. <laughs> the dragon chuckles at his own wit. His massive body gives the distinct impression that he is overweight. Indicating eating habits that uh, don't bode well. Same. Ah, foreigners, the Durgaard priest says with, with great yeah, reverence. Man. Meet the father of flame, the ever-burning, and the foundry's heart. Semberchad, the worm's mist of Grackelstrug. Well, Why don't you just that. look up, just like, howdy. Oh. Please, the pleasure is all mine. This is kind of a little, little bow. Show you the head that you're looking at. Oh, he's a chunky boy. Uh, yeah, he's oh. he's chunky. He's like coming through. He's got this kind of like really wide stance, just thick, thick body and legs. With and five C's. That's 
five CC is thick. <laughs> oh, I love him. He's so cute. <laughs> He's so chunky. Or possibly, or why? Possibly or evil dragon. <laughs> He looks down to down at you and he, he goes mm -hmm. Yes, I believe these will do. Come. Come to my chambers. I would like to I would speak with them alone. And he just starts going back down the hall. Oh, it's just so chunky boy. <laughs> He's just so excited for our chalky dragon. Yes, I'm here for it. Oh, uh, follow. Uh, you hear here in the background a thunk and ding, 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 ding. Uh, and the, the keepers go oh, and after him, <laughs> and they stand guard at the entrance to this cavern. Uh, you walk in and you see the chalky dragon has made himself comfortable on a massive treasure hoard. He's a dragon, you know. What do you do? Yeah, th th it, that's it. Stands to reason. He 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 kind of looks down the hall, squints his eyes a little, looks a little bit to your to the to the right of your group and just narrows his head down. He's not looking at you guys. He's looking to the right of you guys. And he says, I said alone. That his head kind of moves up and kind of like looks off down the hall as if watching something move away. Is he delirious? In sight? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, he was absolutely looking at something. Something you couldn't see. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Now. Oh, that we have some privacy, huh? I have never not seen many of your kind here in the city. Uh, what are you doing, Ninja Crackle Stug? I would know your names first. Wait, please, please. He's just kind of like lounging on, just like like he's on a chaise lounge on this treasure hoard. Um, As you do. Um. Well. Well. Howdy. Um. I'm. I'm Roderick. Um. We are just uh, passer throughs um, on our way to various locations and stuff, and um, we are just stop decided to stop. Uh, we heard about this place and decided to stop by um, on our way to Everlight Grove, um, where we, our friend here is from, and we're dropping him all. And he wanted to go home. I don't believe Stool is with you. Stool is oh. back at the, the, the lair. Well, All the NPCs are back in the. Well, uh, well, one of our friends that is um, back at our inn. Well, let me adem that. One of our friends that are back at the inn, this little um, uh, person, uh, our friend named Stool, he's uh, wanting to go home to the uh, Neverlight Grove. And uh, we decided to stop uh, to take him home. And uh, we uh, came to the city first. It's been a long travel, and we, we needed a respite. A bit. Is Roderick panicking? Not really panicking, just more ad admiration. The fact that there's a it's it's a dragon. Like yes, it's a chromatic, but it's it's a it's a dragon. Like right. he studied it's, them. It's, it's an adult a, red dragon. Yeah. He studied them and all of the thing for the majority of his life, and all. And so it's just like, oh my god, there's a living dragon in front of me. He 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 looks a little thicker than what you would expect a dragon to be. Yeah, but Roderick's not going to say that because he knows better. 
Um, it's a scientist so, seeing uh, an interesting specimen is kind of like what it is it's like ooh this is really interesting <laughs> exciting um, so yeah he's just very astonished and just like oh my god about the whole thing and so he's kind of just like gushing out everything uh, you seem very excited I, I am sir I am why is that? Uh, I I'm from a um, monastery up in the uh, above world, and uh, my whole life came to studying of dragons. No, I hope they, that none of your studies have put a red dragon like me in lower view. Oh no 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 sir no. That this is an awe-inspiring moment. Oh, yes. I am a brilliant specimen. That you are. What can we help you with? Oh, well, I'm, I've, I'm just interested in you. You're interested in people doing some heroic deeds here in the city, are you not? How about you? And he turns to Lassiter. Uh, what is your name? Tell me about yourself. My name's Lassie. Uh, this Lassie? Is my... <laughs> Lassie. I'm calling you that from now uh, on. Okay. <laughs> Brought this um, on yourself. I know. <laughs> and already regretting it. <laughs> um, uh, I I uh, wave not wave but point to little boar cat. This is my uh friend, uh Pip. I don't know if he his name is significant in the dragon world or not. So Pip, um, I uh, yeah. <laughs> little boar cat. It just kind of like turns to you like what. <laughs> He just kind of, like, cocks his head to the side, like, really? <laughs> um, oh, you also feel a little thwack in the back of the head. <laughs> deal with it. Oh, oh, deal that's with a, it. That seems to be a uh, interesting little one. Uh, we, I am from the upper... Plane? Uh, surface world, surface world. That's uh, we're not on different planes or anything. Yeah, same world, yeah. just lower. Just trying to get back. Oh, this is a good place to look for an exit. Yes. Yeah. A uh, question. Yes. What is your question? I mean, you're telling me something about you, so I might as well answer questions for you. Uh, why are you so much bigger than other dragons? I mean, how would you have you seen many dragons? I look at little Borcat. Shut up. Uh, he, he he's like he he kind of like narrows his eyes. Like you better stop. I uh, I'm gonna use a key point to activate my visage of the dragon of my astral self and to whisper to Lassiter to shut the fuck up. Uh, my bad. Um, I was just trying to tell you how glorious you look compared to other uh, lower dragons. Yeah, that's right. Just compliment. Well, I admit I have it. Well, there is work. Being the wormsmith of Grocklestuga, there is work to be done by me. They could not do it without me because I am the most important being here in the city. The city. And because of it, they lavish me with treasures and food. Ah, oh, it is a glorious time. No one has it better. 
This Clearly. is our friend, Syra. Just <laughs> 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 pass the buck. Shift, 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 shift the focus, shift the focus. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. You haven't tell, told me much about yourself. Like you said, you're from the surface world, but tell me a little bit about where, like, where have you from? What is your life experiences? I, I have not been much far out of the Grackle Stug. I'd like to learn more about the world. Well, I was a soldier back in my few days ago, weeks, I don't know. Uh, um, it kind of does blend together down here in the Underdark. Yeah, don't really know when we are, actually, now that I think about it. Um, that's about it, just a, sol uh, just a simple soldier. Uh, trying to find his way back home. Uh, I didn't realize soldiers had familiars. Well, this little guy just popped up one day. You feel a thwack against the back of your head again? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you, you notice little Borkad's head, head looks at him and kind of like gives us what looks like a grin. <laughs> Uh, and you, ah, such a beautiful woman. What is your oh. name? Where are you from? Tell me about yourself. Oh, well, you may call me Miss Syra Luck, and she'll kind of give like a low, low bow, you know. Ah, such manners. I very much appreciate that. Well, of course, the, the locks are, are well known for their, you know, their courtesies and I mean, I come from a high-class family, after all. It was always expected of us. And speaking of familiars, here is mine, and she'll she'll pop Sova into view, and she'll use a uh, prestidigitation to kind of make like sparkles, like as she flies through the air, just kind of like, you know. Ha! He he starts clapping his paws together. Splendid, splendid. Yeah, so I, I didn't plan to be down here. I was actually in search of my father, you see. I, ah, the on long the, on the surface, On the surface world, I, I'm actually a uh, investigator of some sorts. Hmm. Well, I was actually hired by my mother to find him. He, he disappeared out of our lives years ago, but... Well, I was on his trail when when I was captured by the drow, and well, here I am. Well, an interesting tale, an investigator, you. Yes. And you, and he goes on with. Um, since the players aren't here, I'm not going to go through all of them. But he goes talks talks with Haley and Leaf and Gage. Gets a little. He. Gets a little familiar with him, with them. He says, well, where are my manners? And as, as you probably, probably understand, I'm the wormsmith here. I'm Them Thembertrod, the wormsmith of Stug. I go around and ensure that all the for forger's fires, the fires are fully lit. Lit and stay at the powerful fire they are. I mean, I am a red dragon, as it is. <laughs> and then he kind of, like, looks around, looks down the hallway. Now, I have something I would ask of you. Become yeah, my her. agents. We'll give you more access to the city. And I would like, and with... You also gain uh, my protection. What, what would that entail doing? Oh, various things. What I would like you to do is actually help the Keepers of the Flame, my servants here in, in Grackelstug, those priests that had delivered you on to me. 
I would like you to assist them. But before you report back to them, I would like you to report back to me. I see. Oh. Yes, sir. Out of curiosity, what would we be protecting the city from? Exactly. No, you would gain my protection in the city. You misunderstand. What would we be doing for you for this protection? No, oh, just just whatever I, I need. I need. And what what would? Right now, all I need you to do, one simple task, is to help the keepers of the flame. But before reporting back to them when completing any mission they may have, have you do, report to me. That, that seems doable. Excellent. Go to car! And, uh... Hey, uh... Hey, Dorgar comes in and is red. Priestly Rose. Uh, yes. Yes, yes. There. You will be these li liaisons. You will be the liaison to these people. Do you, uh, do you have a group name or something? These people. Uh, uh, is there some either way to call you besides those people that have been helping us? Um... No, no, we, we really haven't, like, thought about that. Um, we, we can troubleshoot something down the line, yeah. and next time we come back and talk to you, uh, we, we can, we can, we can have something for you. How about Sember Chard's Flames? Yes, that would be perfect. We will call you the Flames. The Flames. flames. Yes, uh, uh, these people are now Sember Chard's Flames. Uh, please, please provide them with, with the appropriate, uh, needs that they have to allow them to roam the city, and I bid you to make use of them, as you will. Uh, yes, sir. As soon as Sorry. you said the flames, my my thoughts just went, ding! Flames. Flame! <laughs> the, talk, uh, the talker uh, uh, says, uh, Hey, sir, uh, I'm Come with me. He starts walking off. Uh, follow. All, all right. Thank you, sir. It, it was a great honor meeting you. Go. Um, and just whisper to him, "You're beautiful." <laughs> <laughs> My vest is still up for ten minutes, so <laughs> I can whisper things to people within sixty feet of me. <laughs> Uh, if you if you if you do that it, it, and you're looking at him, uh, he he gives a slight like smile and chuckle and gives you a wink. Oh God! <laughs> Put in the demon dragons. Okay. All dragons are beautiful. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All dragons are beautiful, especially this thick boy. <laughs> the first live one I, uh, Roger has seen. He's only seen dead ones. <laughs> Oh, he gets to see live ones. Yeah, he's got fanboy over the first live one he sees as that trying to kill him. Alright, uh, so you walk out of the uh, Thembertrod's lair uh, into some nearby build into a nearby building and Rataka said, okay, so here's here's what you need. Here's what we have for you. Uh, first off, I would like to give you these. And he hands you uh, some badges of gold that have a, uh, a basically it looks like an engraving of Thumber Chod's head uh, on, on it. Is that um, their dragon that we were just talking to? Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. Wait, okay, so is is the head, like, a, a big head, or is he trying to sell himself as uh, skinnier than he is? Like, is it actually his, how he actually is, or, like, a different? Yes. It's how he yep, actually it's is. It's a thick boy head. Okay, cool. Mainly because 
people because he does go around the city. The city, you when the time you've been here, you haven't seen this happen. But he does go around the city, and Kartaker will probably mention, like, discuss what he does. He will occasionally leave the lair and travel around amongst the forges and basically uses fire breath to ensure that the flames are ripping hot. So my band that I have my arm, I'm going to affix the badge thing to it. I'm going to just put mine in a pocket. That's just like right there. Just bam. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything special I can put mine on? I was just looking at my picture of Roderick. I'm like, where should this go? Oh, he has a nice little armband right there. It's either there or the sash that's right here for his, like, little bit of a start he has. Because he likes to show off his physique. He's worked hard for this body. He says, he says, all right, these badges will allow you if you flash them around, but I ask that you don't do it so, so often, but they will allow you access to the entire city. Uh, be careful where you go, but because even places places that we are not the, the higher power, such as the stone guards and the stone giants, and they're not necessarily really approval of us. This, there's divisions amongst us, different groups. Oops, but uh, it will allow you to exit that dark like district district and come into the city proper. Do not abuse it. Oh, of course not. <laughs> I perish the thought. Uh, the badge, does it only give us uh, word damn it. Um, access to locations or does does it give us privileges? Uh, this does consider you to be agents of the, the Keepers of the Flame. So, anybody associated with it will understand that you do have a higher access to things, so you may get... So, depending on who you're flashing the badge to, to you'll probably get a better answer than if you didn't. So, it does give, allow you access to also more information in place in people. Uh, also, there as actually a few shops that might give you a little bit of a deal. I like the name of those places because we actually need to do a little shopping. <laughs> uh, mind you, out. most of most of the work here in the in Grackle Stug are pretty mundane items. We do have a few Same. magical items, but nothing of true import. All of that is done elsewhere. That's understandable. We it's still it's been a long trek for us to get here, and we just need to replenish some stuff. Uh, uh, you would definitely be able to get supplies, but of course, I would assume you would do this after you do do some of the the of quests course. that we provide you. Of course, I'm starting to talk like a pirate for some reason. Arr, anyways, <laughs> uh, so Gertaker, um Provides you with these and it gives you a little familiarity of, of gives you some information about the keepers, just to kind of give you an idea of who are you working for. Um, says uh, I don't know why Thembertrad uh, has asked for you for us to take you on, but hey, he's the wormsmith. Very true. Out of curiosity, what what was that? What was it? It wasn't a giant. It was a was it a giant that came that we had a combat with? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a stone giant. Is that a common occurrence here? Or, I mean, uh, is... no, that's relatively new. Was he working for the uh, soldier people? Uh, no, he would be with the stone giants. There were other groups that wanted to talk to us. So you know of at least three groups in the city. There's the uh, Keepers of the Flame, we are talking to right now. Uh, let me actually Stone Giants. The, the uh, Clan uh, Karen Gorm, which is the Stone Giants. 
and uh, and the Stone Guard. Yeah, which was part of the Grackelstug military. Okay. And which group wanted us to go with them? All of I, those I three. Oh, okay. They each had something for us to do. Basically, I, it was a choose our mission. <laughs> I only remember two, two options. Yeah, so the stone giant from Clan Kirarn. Um, revisit the names. Um, the the stone giant from Clan Kirarn uh, asked you to visit them. Uh, he, he was not in any rush to do anything, but he wanted to. He invited you to the clan's area of the city uh, to speak with the stone speaker, who wanted to, who was, would thank you for knocking uh, Rihud. Uh, oh, it was Dorhun, Dorhun, an apprentice of stone speaker Grom. One. Wanted you to come to Karagorn Cavern, where the stone giants are, as part of a thank you for not killing Rehud, <laughs> uh, who was the greatest giant. Uh, the stone guards, basically, they were the police. They wanted to take you downtown in order to discuss what, what the shit happened. So they were kind of playing police. Yeah. Then uh, a priest of the Keepers of the Flame stepped in and said, hey, we want to take them to talk to the dragon. Stone Guard, realizing the nature of everything, reluctantly said, all right, if you're going to take them, take them. But you guys need to come talk to us afterwards. So one's kind of like the invitation, one's an order, and actually the Keeper of the Flame is kind of an invitation. You took the invitation for the Keeper of the Flame. So we still have to go see the uh, police force base for Oh, I have to, but yeah. Well, probably should. Yeah. <laughs> but don't have to. All right, so rebel. How about not in a town that we're just visiting? Probably not a good idea. <laughs> we're the we're the enforcers now. <laughs> not really either. We just got <laughs> badges. <laughs> I'm high on power. <laughs> You know what they say? Power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. So he says, okay. So to, to give you some some familiarity on, on on what's happening here and what we would like we have a task for you to do is recently uh we keepers have sensed a great disturbance here in the underdark. We believe this may have something to do with the Grey Ghosts. The Grey Ghost? Ghosts. What? Plural. Plural. All right. Uh, what? What be that? Sometimes I have to bounce around between things to I can get all the information. Where is it? This is one of those times when I actually wish that I had the had the uh, book, the book, <laughs> the actual physical book. Um, the Great Ghost says are the Thieves Guild here in in Grackelstuk. Uh, they're not actually ghosts. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool. How long have they been haunting the place? 
Well, they're not the actual ghosts. They're just called that. They're, they're a uh, thieves guild pretty much here. Oh, well, well, I, like I guess it could be the same question. I mean, they've been haunting this area, per se. Aww. Aww. So what, what we would like you to do is to confirm that, that the Grey Ghosts are, have involvement in this disturbance. And what and disturbance? Break... I'm sorry, go ahead. You just the sense something is wrong. We're not exactly sure. It's a psionic thing. You wouldn't understand. What we would like you to do is to locate the Grey Ghosts, bring back whatever powerful magic the thieves you are using to cause this disturbance. Uh, one of the things that might might be a key to this, to show you this disturbance was that stone giant from earlier. Thank Somehow you. went crazed. Or maybe the stone giant was just having a bad day. Just no, I just stone giants don't typically have two heads. Noted. We have identified a Darrow named uh, Droki. Carries messages and and supplies for the Thieves School Guild. Uh, he you sometimes see him running around the city. He has his hat with a couple of tentacles flailing off of it. So, the last we've seen is that he frequently goes into the West Cliff to collect, to contact his employers, or at least that's what we think he's doing, since it's out, outside the normal area of the city. We'd like you to go investigate there, locate him, now follow him, and locate the Grey Ghosts, and find out what they have anything, well, what they are up to, and whatever magic items they may be using. And why do you feel like it's the Great Ghost that's doing this? Well, they they are a uh, a wily bunch. This is just our thought. We're not sure if this is true or not, but we believe that it is them. But you, being outsiders, will be able to go places where we cannot. We head into the West Clef, we'd have to actually go in force. But you being outsiders and not Duragard like we are, you have a better chance of surviving. What was the name of that fellow we needed to find and follow? Droki. E R O K I. Just try to keep my notes up. In the chat. Mm. Is a Daryl. You know what a Daryl looks like because you killed one. Pupito. I was going to say, yeah, we totally did. Yeah. And, and locate the Grey Ghost. Question marks flying over my head. You said that the last location was the West Cliffs. A west cleft. Cleft. Okay. So if you look at uh, in the uh, center of the map, there's uh, Ladugar's furrow, furrow. The west side, there's a gate to the west cleft district, and the, to the on the right side is a gate to the east cleft district. So this is in the west cleft. Um. Just, just in case you're not aware, we don't see names. Um, I, I don't. It, it sounded oh, like you were uh, telling us a name like, that we couldn't see. Oh, okay. He also hands you a map which which identifies all all the uh, sections of the city. <laughs>
This is my justification for when all this. It's showing everything. Ooh, I like that. All of sacred scrolls. Shattered fire. Ooh, uh, one more question, really. Th this is really just for the DM. Um, but, uh, is there like a eco economic difference? Economic? Yeah, mm -hmm. difference between um, like this part of the map and the south part of the map. Um, I wouldn't say there really is necessarily. Um, maybe a little bit. Like it, basically, all the good stuff is on this side of the dark lake district. Or basically on the side of, of Ladagar's furrow, but probably even just a little bit like tiered, like below the slums almost. But it's really the Dark Lake District is where everybody can be. The rest of it is very restricted to Duragar, essentially. And then and then it's just kind of like a, a scale of high class stun low class to high class uh, as you go south. The south is where the uh, the the so southern portion is basically the high class, especially near the hold of the Deep King. Okay. We will get right on that. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, you hear the sound of uh, quest being accepted. <laughs> he, uh, Gartikar has uh, just so I can give you the name. I'll be. This is the guy you're talking to. He gives them. A, he gives you a uh, um, all a holy symbol of Ladugar. Uh, after an acolyte arrives with some gold pit pins featuring Thembertrod's profile. That is actually the badge that I'm referring to. <laughs> Did we go get our the rest of our party? Or... I really didn't have time to do that. What? We can now. Oh, okay. I mean, you don't have to have... I mean, all of you are significant enough, and we're the only ones that uh, you're the only ones we're authorized to give these to. Okay, that 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 changes everything. Thank you very much for that information. Yeah, if you do have others others in town, they would have to earn their own way up. Okay. You and guys are going to be the foots and ground, and just when you're traveling around the Inner Dark, you have some companions that will be coming with you. They're hanging out on Colburn's Lair, maybe doing their own little thing in the Dark Lake District. Imjar is probably gambling. <laughs> Ron's sharpening his axe since Lassie's not there. Uh, Stool, Stool is watching him. Um... And you, so you said there were some stores that might um, help us out, um, just so I can we know. Well, you're not going to do that right now, and all. Yeah, so there's a but, few shops. Shops here. Is, is there anything particularly you're looking for? We may be able to acquire them, especially if it's going to help you in this mission. Well, I know Missy here, ho uh, Holly, needs a new axe. Hers is a little. Melty. Ah! Just needs a new axe. Let's see. Uh, Les, are you attached to this? No. Ah, okay. Excellent, I've got one right here. And he runs into it. He says something in, in Dwarvish. 
Uh, yeah, Dwarvish. Uh, and the Acolyte runs into the back and comes back with this uh, shiny... Um, shiny uh, great axe. On. I would like... Holly... You give me a d20 roll. Basically a luck roll. Not very lucky. Ooh. It's a shiny... It looks beautiful. It's a shiny new great axe. All right. I'll just take <laughs> the modification off. <laughs> Wouldn't mending work? Yep. Or like stuff like yeah, that, that would have worked. That would have worked. Someone said they had that. But, hat. but nobody decided to mend, so hey. People knew the axe was melted because they were trying to save someone who fell into a pit with a black ooze. Pudding. Pudding. I mean, it's a type of ooze. It's, it's but, a, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That was really just, unlucky. Just still, just saying. Um, <laughs> uh, does anyone here study magic of any sort? Oh, uh, there's the temple to uh, Drinka. It's in the North Pharaoh district. Although I wouldn't necessarily go there. It's hard to get into. They're mostly there. Hmm. Okay. Boy, bizarre. Hmm. Well, I don't know if they would have a... I mean, this doesn't seem like a rapier type place. You know, it's more like other sharp objects. And ah, you need a rapier. Well, I was just curious to see what, what you had in stock. Well, let's see. Are you specifically looking for a type of rapier, at least? Yeah, if anything, she'll pull hers out. Well, this one has served me well, but if there's anything better than this... Uh, roll me a d20. 20, 20, 20... Oh! Nice. This gives you a game breaking item. Yeah, I'm not gonna go that hard. Um roll me a D four. Uh oh. Four. Four. <laughs> Three. Hold on. All right, roll me a d6. This is great. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. Roll me a d20. 18. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, I'm reading this wrong. Okay. 
<laughs> this is great. Oh god, what do I do? <laughs> I love this. What have I done? Uh, it says, actually, we think we might have something that might be might be uh, useful that's more than a mundane one. We just happen to have one of the uh, have uh, a, a very special rapier. Um, we're not exactly sure what it does. Uh, no one's actually like really identified it or anything, uh, but uh, it, it seems to be unbreakable. Uh, and he, he is. He, he, Says something to to the acolyte who runs back, comes out with this um, brilliant scabbard rapier in on the uh, on the uh, sheath is like all these different animals. There's like twenty different animals uh, listening along the sheath, and when when he pulls out the blade blade you see these on the hilt or actually on the hilt you see those same same animals on there is uh, just crafted in what looks to be pure silver and it just gleams Ooh. I like shinies um, all we really know is that it's magic but we're not exactly sure what it does Oh, if you give me a few moments, I think I can. I can see that for myself. Okay. Can you cast identify? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ritually. <laughs> yes. uh, after completing the ritual, um, it is a polymorph blade. Holy shit! <laughs> oh damn! That, so you it on before. a d twenty. And then I was like, okay, so they have a magic rapier. You roll the three, which, if it's magical, it's at least uncommon, rare, very rare, or legendary. But I roll, had you roll d4, one being common, two or common, two being, <laughs> being rare. Three being very rare, and four being legendary. You had a three, so you didn't get the legendary. And then I had your roll of the chart that I got in regards to rapiers, magical rapiers. There was six different options. You rolled a five, which was the polymorph blade. Holy shit. Yeah, the d20 uh, actually was not needed at all. I just was misreading the thing because I didn't actually read it. Is this, is this like a, a homebrew thing or is that just uh Nope. This is from the Lost Lost Laboratory of Qualsh. <laughs> Qualsh. Polymorph. An actual published thing. When you attack a creature with a magical weapon and roll 20 on the attack roll, the creature must make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw in addition to suffering the attack's normal, normal effects. On a failed save, the creature also suffers the effect of a polymorph spell. Oh no, it's gonna be Roll bad. a D20 and consult the following table to determine the form the target creature is transformed <laughs> to. Here's the thing is... I think oh, no. fail at the T-Rex. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> And the thing is, it lasts for an hour, but no one is concentrating on it. <laughs> so no one can stop it besides knocking it down, knocking its hit point down. Oh. Uh, also, um, I love if chaotic, you also please. realize, because you haven't attuned to it, you just identified it, um, you think it might be slightly cursed? Because also, the weapon comes with a curse um, once you attune to it that you don't want to part with it. Well, I don't want to part with it. We <laughs> already yeah, right. doesn't want to do it. This is already chaotically very fun, so... I'll see the downside. Well, you know, you attack a, attack a random 
CR half, you know, mushroom thing, and it turns into a T Rex. Yeah, that that is very much. It, it is. It is. It is essentially wild magic, so you can't guarantee the T Rex. So, but hey, on a crit, on a crit success, they turn into a rabbit. And this I mean, a giant ape magic. is actually pretty good too. So, you basically want to roll low. It depends on if you know. It depends on who you're targeting. If you're targeting a, a crew, um, someone on your side, then yeah, roll low. If you're targeting an enemy, roll high. See what you do is is you just you just uh, say hey stool, and it still goes wet. Then you poke him. <laughs> just 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 a slight poke that you do damage, <laughs> like one point of damage. Like I'm not actually trying to hit him. I'm just trying to do damage. <laughs> And then poof! Just keep poking him, healing him. <laughs> we appreciate this. I, I I don't use much weapons. My my fists are my weapons. I can see I work out a lot and all. So we appreciate you giving these things up for these people. Uh, let's 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 see. Um, let's let's have Gage take a. Uh... No, Gage has a good weapon. So yeah. fine. Unless you have some for, uh, some people who punch and stuff, but I understand. There's not much for weapons for people who do unarmed strikes. Heads to Arthur. Yeah, Arthur's going to take. There's items that enhance stuff that. Like the insignia of the claw, we won't find that. Maybe in our last campaign we would have found it, but not this one. Balls up the sky. Well, it has to deal with the call of the dragon, so. I mean, they're around, technically, right yeah. now, but. Wink. Oh, not quite. In the throes of looting places. Yeah, I know. And, and technically, the Cult of the Dragon has been around for centuries. Yes. But also, like, maybe not in the Underdark. Maybe in the Underdark they have a sack. Maybe. Who knows? But it's going to be hard-pressed to come upon one of those. Yeah. Paul's out this guy. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if Leaf wanted anything. Oh, we can, like, retroactively do them, I guess. Yeah. Basically, basically, it's a luck roll. And then based off of that, I do something. Um, once you get an extra um, 20, you ended up I'll, getting a pretty damn good... <laughs> it doesn't add. give you a plus to your attack or anything, but... I don't really have anything in mind, but I can well, ask for something. I mean, it's already a, on its own being a magic weapon that's going to yeah. reduce, you know, resistances. Yeah. yeah. But what's going to be a pain in the ass for you is when I hit things, you have to keep making DC. You have to do wisdom saving throws. throws. Yep. Unless it has legendary action or legendary actions, uh, is immune to. The damage Which, type or uh, our shape changers. So you can do it, it. Does has no effect on doppelgangers or changelings, but uh, well, or, but if anything with a legendary resistance, this yeah, is going to so be you, you can do that because, on a dragon <laughs> because you have to keep wasting your resistance on not transforming into a an no. Arc. That it, it just doesn't work. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the polymorph. If, if you were to hit Thimberchod with it. He wouldn't even have to roll a save. It was just auto. He's just immune to it. Yeah. Oh, how come? Because he has legendary actions. Basically saying anything that doesn't have a legendary action and is, is not a shape changer or immune to the damage type, or in this case, piercing, um, uh, well, this effect would, would take effect. This would take effect, but anything with a 
uh, legendary actions. What it's if immune. we use up all his actions? No, it's it's not about it, it, but he innately has them. I mean, they come back every turn anyways, so because he has the ability to make legendary actions, then yes. It's not the fact that he doesn't have that he's used all of his legendary actions up for it. And he could choose when to do those anyways. So he could do them like right before Cyrus sticks turn or his turn. I never knew legendary actions came back. Yeah, legendary resistances only come back on the long rest. Legendary actions come back per every every turn. it's legendary reaction, actions per round. Yeah. It's it's basically a mechanic for uh action econ economy. If you're trying to fight a dragon, it's just the dragon versus all of you fuckers. You have six people in the party versus one who can only do actions on its turn. <laughs> Hell no. Why would you can carry actions action on your turn? And layer I actions. Just, and... I just remember this very fondly because of our PvP. <laughs> I get to be a dragon. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So. That's an idea. Yeah, well, like, yeah, it it was part of my story too. So, what if you what if you polymorph something and then dominate monster? <laughs> Could work. Yeah, since you're not concentrating. You polymorph them; they turn into a uh, turn into a T Rex. Go rawr! And dominate next person monster. goes, he's dominate monster, they fail. Now they're on your side, at least until they lose hit points, or for an hour at least. Or for as long as the dominate takes effect. Alright. So we'll say uh, you do some shopping. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be weapons, they have armor and other things. So any anything that you might think of that you might want, Lassiter? Um a thing. Uh not really. The I uh the only magic item that comes to mind is like the the defender or like the sentinel shield or something. So you want a shield? Sure. All right. Roll me a d20. Do it. Do it. D20 14. Okay. Uh. Roll me a D2. Two, two. I right, roll me a d6. One. Uh, it says, uh, shield. Uh, here, hold on. I think we might have something here. And they go run right to the back and they come come out and says, ah, this one we actually know a little bit more about. Uh, this is a magical shield. Uh, it is known as an arrow catching shield. Gives you a plus two against AC against ranged attacks. Only against ranged attacks. That includes ranged spells. So, um, this bonus is in addition to the shield's normal bonus to AC. In addition, whenever an attacker makes a ranged attack against a target within five feet of you, you can use your reaction to become the target of the attack instead. Is this the... Uh, there's two versions that I'm seeing. Uh, one requires attunement and the other does not. Uh, this is the one that requires attunement. 
Ooh. There's there's reasons why there was an arrow catching shield without hood two mint. That was for another game. <laughs> I basically made a copy of it and just took off the attunement. Great. Mm. I'll take it. But this one requires attunement. Do you by chance have anything? Like anything for a monk? Literally anything? I ain't greedy. I'm just appreciative. <laughs> Let's look up. Let's see what Google says. <laughs> there's a few, there's a, like, there's some, but they're, like, really magical. Like, there's a new one specifically for monks, the Dragon Hide Belt. Um. But there's very few items that are specifically for monk. Roll me a d20. Oh, god damn, that's almost a 17. Um, sorry, we don't have anything like that. Uh, yeah, we did have some braces of defense, but the uh, Thambitrod took those. That's okay. I appreciate you looking. I will say this. If you had at least rolled a 10, there would be a dragon hide belt. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. But you rolled a 7, so... That's almost a 17. Sorry. This is what happens with luck rolls. Yeah. Aww. Because there's three different dragon hide belts. Yeah. Uncommon, rare, and very rare. So, plus depending one, plus on how two. well you did, I just thought that the... Essentially, the DC would be 10. And then, based off of where you get between 10 and 20, would be what type of belt it would be. I understand. That was my logic. All right, if that be all, off you go. Um, just a quick question: What? Uh, where are the stone giants again? Ah, they're in Caragorn Ca uh, Cavern. Uh, you give me, here, sure, give me a red map. He rolls out the map and says, "Right there, where it says Cairngorm Cavern." Thank you so much. Just up the street and to the left. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to take a quick break because I really need to fill, refill my beverage. So, uh, I'm, let's take I'm five. Trying find, yeah, I'm trying to find this this sword, like add on to my sheet, but it's like just look like up polymorph blade. Yeah, yeah it's polymorph on... blade rapier. I think it might it should show up as because I, I typed in polymorph blade on roll twenty and D and D Beyond, and it's like nope. Yeah, come on. Like, I see it here, but to, like, put it yeah. on my sheet is like, nope, doesn't exist. It's the only thing that pops up is Wand of Polymorph. Hmm, hold on. And even, like, on the source book, like, I was just going to buy the item, and it's like, no. <laughs> like, I want to spend money, but you won't let me. Take my money. Yeah, you have to have non-core D and D. Um, checked. Checked. It's there now. Okay. Let's see. I have to edit my profile, I guess. My... Uh, I already did it. Okay. So you may just need to refresh your play page. But yeah, it's considered non-core D and D books, but probably because it's an adventure. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's probably like just a tiny little thing since, so. Holly. Oh, there it is. Yay. That's hilarious. Anyways, I'm going to read from my beverage. Yeah, 
It's like, I, I don't even care that there's not like a plus to damage or attacks. Like, it's just hilarious on its own. <laughs> I just feel bad for him having to keep making these saves. <laughs> Blade of Medusa? Oh, there's a gambler's blade that... Here we are. That's mine. All right. Two questions. Mm -hmm. Where are the uh, military people located? Like they're they're in Silver Lake Hold. Or, no, is it Silver Lake Hold? I think it was. Yeah, Silver Lake Hold. Okay. And second question. Um, did we have like a a time goal for this um assignment? Nope. Ah, okay. Just figure it out. So, I feel like we should probably go give, um, I never remember names, uh, the military people, they, you know, wanted to question us and all. Consider this back in session. Now that I'm back from getting my beverage. Refilled. Because it's awfully dry being 32 degrees here in Austin, Texas, which is a chill to me, but it's freezing for the people here. Everybody else here in the city I live in. Oh, I, love, I love that temperature. Nice and chilly. Um, yeah, I feel like we should give the military a visit real quick before we um, make any more plans. Unless anyone has like a... Not obligations. Objections. I have no objections. Yeah. That sounds fine. Because we told As you know, guy anyway, so. so you look at the map and you see the closest place to go to is a Cairngorm Cavern. So you're going to, instead, you're going to go to the complete opposite side of the city. I mean, you could stop by the, uh, the inn, check in with your NPC friends before you pop over to over like cold. Um, it's a bit of just say, say, see the stone giants just because yeah they're right here but if you feel like oh um no that is fine uh my only question is why are we visiting them well we mm -hmm. stopped the one from attacking mm -hmm. him like, or like knocked him unconscious and stuff and they kind of want to thank us for that like not hailing him okay and stuff, yeah. and we can see what's going on, because, like, um, the one guy said, Stone Giants aren't supposed to have two heads. Okay. I forgot that invitation thing. Yeah. Well, we got three at once, so... Yeah, I, I can only remember two of them. 
I remember the stone giant leader guy being there, but I thought he was with the military guy. Yeah, he he came in with them. Yeah. Okay, so I, I thought they were both like the same group faction or whatever. Nope. Okay, but yeah, uh, let's go to the Giants. Maybe maybe there'll be Clives there. Doop, 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 doop. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, 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 doop. Orcs and... Are you saying, like, Orcs and uh, Goliaths are a thing for Lassiter or something? He like them big and chunky it, and rough. Anyways, <laughs> no king shaming or anything. We're just making observations, right? Uh, as you approach, um. Uh, as you approach, you see um, uh, Dorhun, uh, who is the one who talked to you and invited you to Karengorn, talking to another stone giant who uh, looks a little more... Well, he definitely looks to be the stone speaker. You could say that. He, he's got the dress and by the the way... Um, Air of authority. Is, yeah. Is they're waiting at the entrance to to Karen Gordon Cavern. Um, hey guys. He says, "Thank you so much for for saving our brother, for not killing our brother." Of course, is that like it was? He was in distress. He wasn't like trying to. Arm people. He was just scared. We we heard that there was a this band of thieves might have been responsible for that. Yeah, we kind of heard like y'all aren't supposed to have two heads. No, and he, he had two heads. Yes, it was quite strange. Do we uh, uh, understand how this happened? Uh, we are not sure. He was in deep in meditation with the rest of us. Uh, it when suddenly he sprouted another head and went rampaging out. Okay, I'd be just concerned if all of a sudden one just starts just rapidly spread out on my uh, neck too, so that makes a lot of sense. Did it seem like it hurt him? Um... By the way, he was yelling. I think he was very disoriented. Maybe he was just confused. <laughs> well, he was. I mean, disoriented, an, confused, kind of the same thing. <laughs> he had an extra head growing at him. He was getting so much more extrasensory information. His body couldn't handle it. Think of what happened if you sprouted a second head. Little oh. more cat kind of looks over at you. <laughs> like you just need to be quiet, Lassie. Sorry, looks over at Silva like, well, you kind of did that the other day. <laughs> uh, um, you do notice that little more cat is now gold again. But again, we we hope he is well and. Uh, just kind of, I know you wanted to speak with us on this matter. Yes, I wanted to thank you personally for 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 your involvement. Uh, is there anything that I can do for you? You seem to be strangers down here. Are you from the Dreamlands? The Dreamlands? I believe uh, some... Other natives that have been known to come to Grackelstug. We call them call it the surface world. Yes. 
Yes, uh, we are. Um, yeah, we're, we're just uh, traveling through. Uh, we have a bit of uh, some friends over at the uh, inn, and they are... Uh, we're just helping everyone get home. Uh, we kind of all clumped together at one point, and we all just try to get back to the places we were at. Uh, I, believe I, do, I believe I do know of, of some uh, merchants that come from from there that might be able to assist you with returning to the surface. Uh, also, if you ever make a trip to Blingdenstone, that would also be a good place to make contact with someone. Uh, I think that is a part of our journey, yes. Um, right, We were kind of stopping here after our long travel and stuff and trying to recoup and everything before we head to the Neverlight Grove. Hmm. Due to one of our Comrades being from there and trying to go home. He, he, the two stone giants kind of look at each other. Is there something the, amiss? The Graham uh, looks back at you and says, Something evil serves in the Underdark. The rock itself cries in pain and horror. Madness creeps from the blackest depths. Pay heed to the signs that surround you. Cave with two faces. Rock devoured. The land overgrown. The pebble besides itself. Self flesh. Just Earth rejects wall. its wards. And the tun tunnels shake in fury. By these portents you shall know of evil's presence and of evil's face. This is what the stones tell me. Just kind of look at the walls and just like, oh, you poor thing. <laughs> you, we've kind of noticed some of this madness. Um, bits in here and there. We've all, majority of us have experienced some oddities that have befallen us. Um... Why did he start saying all of that? Uh, it was after Roderick mentioned Neverlight Grove. Right. And then he just started spewing all of that. He felt um, it was important. You're, okay? you're, you're not entirely sure. You know, it, it seems like this is something that he's divined. You don't know exactly how. You don't know much about stone giants. But um, because you did him a kindness, he's given you uh, a kindness back by warning you that something evil stirs in the Underdark. Yeah. That the Underdark is dangerous nowadays. It, it, it was his brother that was rampaging, right? Uh, it was one of his kin. It was oh. one of the stone you giants that was here. To the stone speaker or something. Yeah, he was one uh, of his apprentices. Apprentices. Do you know I, was he near someone unfamiliar to him recently? Someone that might have infected him with whatever sort of madness he was under? Um, no, it was just during some of our meditation. Is is he is he conscious now to ask questions? Uh, no, sadly he's not. He was communing with the stone in the stone here during his time uh, this, when it happened. Okay. He'll need a long rest to recover. Uh, sadly, he still has that second head. Oh, I just not say what I'm thinking. You naughty. Uh, Sara turned to Lassiter. Lassiter? Yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of an ailment like this? Is there some sort of cure? Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure I haven't, but DM, have I? Uh, we're only a history check. Actually, roll me a medicine check. Okay. Uh, roll me a medicine check. Uh, 
All right. Um, dirty 20s is, is pretty good. Something would have actually had to cause this. Uh, definitely, This would definitely not be something that's traditional medicine. Um, so probably not like some sort of virus or bacteria. But since this is definitely unwanted, um, it's some. it might be some sort of spell or curse. I um, wasn't upset at him. Probably just gave him an extra head or something. But someone powerful enough to to cause this effect, that's pretty that's pretty da- uh, terrifying on its own. Especially so suddenly it would have to be a very powerful being. Yes. Especially especially if there is no one actually there. We, hmm, maybe this whole ghost name is is apt for this group. This, if they are able to strike without being seen and curse someone. Um, Do you know the last no, last known location of these of these ghosts? Uh. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. The, uh, uh, the Grey the, Ghosts. Uh, we're yeah, we're kind of thieves. looking into them. As uh, we have heard rumors of the Thieves Guild, but they're, as far as I'm aware, they're just thieves. I wouldn't see any reason why they would curse anybody. No, we're, it, it's just a venue of... Um, possibility that we're investigating so we're just trying to gather information there's just seen some oddities are going on here oh. well we'll be in town um if you like hair of anything in particular or just need anything in general uh We'll be in the, uh, oh god, names, uh, Goldburn's Lair? Goldburn's Lair. Just ask for the flames and, you know, we'll be around. The flames? Are we sticking with, are, are we sticking with that? Yes. <laughs> oh, fine. Nobody's given any better options. <laughs> You're currently your Thumberchod's flames. I didn't want to add the the first part, just in case like these guys don't like those guys. So the flames. Flames <laughs> sounds like a group that would be named af- named by the Wormsmith. <laughs> <laughs> How funny, right? Yeah. And we'll be off. All right. Uh, before you go, uh, uh, Dorhun. And Dorhun reaches uh, into a uh, sack that he has. I would say pouch, but he's a giant. So it's not quite a pouch to you, your size. And he pulls out a polished crystal that's about the length of a uh, human forearm. Uh, Hagram takes it and he offers it as a token of his gratitude. This might be helpful for you. Future. We appreciate that. What is, is a stone? Uh, it is referred to as a stone speaker crystal. How are we going to carry this? It's about the length of a human forearm, so probably about this big. About this big. And how heavy is it? Like, I mean, it's it, it's got some heft to it, but it's not, like, super heavy. Uh, we have a barbarian with us, I guess. We have two of them. <laughs> I, I can hold it, too. I'll hold on to it. Okay. Huh? What does it do? Uh... 
Grants you an advantage on intelligence investigation checks while it's on your person. This crystal at 10 charges while holding it. You can use an action to expend some of it to cast one of the following spells. Speak with animals, speak with the dead, speak with plants. When you cast a divination spell, you can use the crystal in place of one material component that would normally be consumed by the spell at the cost of one charge per level of the spell. The crystal is not consumed when used in this way. It regains 1d6 plus 4 expended charges on a daily at dawn. If you expend the crystal's last charge, roll a d20. On a 1, the crystal vanishes lost forever. So one of those you have to keep charged, otherwise you might lose it. <laughs> yeah. I'll hold on to it. No. If that's alright with everyone. Yeah. Oh, you you don't seem... Uh, that's, I know that's rather large. Uh, uh, Dorun, do you have a... Is it, oh, yes, sir. He, he pulls out. He he quickly runs into to the back and comes back with a sack. Uh, and he kind of like looks at it and then says, hold on. He does a little, uh, he grabs some leather and starts kind of like tying something to it. And he ends up having like two straps that kind of loop around. <laughs> it says, uh, this might help carry that around and probably some of your other things. And he hands you a uh, bag of holding, uh, but it's more of like a backpack of holding. It's not a haversack, handy haversack. It's just like a big old sack. Okay. But with... That you can put on your back. So you guys now have a bag of holding. Okay. Why? Well, because I'm a kind DM. Because... Well, <laughs> that case, then I wouldn't mind holding it if you don't want it. I'm fine with holding on to it. Okay. AKA Dustin likes in being the inventory management guy. I always take it upon myself to do it. Okay. <laughs> I, I will tell you this in any game I played with him. I'm always inventory management. Uh, I just added the crystal to my inventory just to, just to know what it does, but yeah, you can have it. Mm. So, in essence, you have it. I just have it here so I can just see what it is. It, it's just you have it there for the, reference. Yeah. yeah. I'm already um, proficient in investigation, so having advantage on it as well. Score. Nice. <laughs> for, for future reference, are there just giants here? Or are there Goliaths? Um, you haven't actually gone into the cavern. Ah, you were, okay. They met you at the entrance to it, um, based off of and passively insightful enough as you are, um, uh, you would be able to tell they do not allow anybody but giants into the cavern for any reason. They will come out to you, mm -hmm. but no one else goes into the cavern. Which is one of the reasons why the stone speaker was right there when you showed up. They were expecting you. Right. He, he, he seemed like you could show up at any time. This might be a while sort of thing. <laughs> he, he probably was standing there for several hours as you were going over the Thimberchod. Although you probably were only there for probably about 50, 50 minutes. However time it took you to go down there and then weren't there weren't at Thimberchod for that long. So kind of thinking since no one's like we're keep going with the flames i'm not sure everyone felt about it but what about the wayfaring strangers kind of like bought on for us that's fine i literally googled i literally googled adventuring party names and this is one of them i'm like that actually is, fits us really well We still kind of don't know anything about each other. It's oh. the strangers' part. Like we know, we like we know enough that like 
Like, but, yeah, it still kind of fits. I mean, when we spoke to the dragon, we kind of gave little tidbits about ourselves. Yeah, we, we said we troubleshoot some, so we can come back and be like, hey, we decided that we actually are the wayfaring strangers. Just, you'll come back to Thumberjot and say, yes, we're the flames. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe we should give the giant people the new name? Um, yes, uh, so if you do ever need us, um, go to the inn and ask for the Wayfaring Stranger. Wayfaring yeah. Strangers? Well, that sounds better than the flames. That it does. That it does. Thank you very much. I, I don't know why I had a different accent going on for a moment. When when one person's doing a similar, uh, doing a certain accent, and sometimes just pick it up. Yeah, like all right, get back to my southern. All right. Could we get back to our group to let them know? Yeah, what's going on. As as you walk away, you hear this sound in your head of uh, quest complete sound. Da, 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 da. Quest update. I've been really into a a uh, game RPG audiobook that based on a um, virtual reality game that's like that. It's a really good series. Ridian Gate Online. Have you guys seen Sword Art Online show? Yeah, I saw the like I I only saw one series of it. I guess I guess the first one. I haven't fully watched um, Alicization. Yeah, I haven't watched all of them either. But I think I watched the first and the second. Alice Alicization is the third. But oh, I'm old. I started off with Dot Hack Sign, so. I've been trying to get it, like, find that stuff, because I remember it from Toonami. But it's one of those, like, I saw an episode here, episode there, and stuff, and, like, I want, like, well, I was interested in it, and I want to, like, see it all. It's one of those series, it's, it's not an action thing, it's just, it's a lot of talking and story, but... I remember, I remember it, and I really enjoyed it. Did anybody ever see Ronin Warriors? Yes, I had one. I had the red, uh, the red um, samurais. Um, yeah, weren't they based on like astrology signs or something? No, that was um, Saint uh, Saint 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 uh, uh, Saint Saint Senya. That uh, they all had power armor. That each one was based off a constellation. Uh, the Ronin warriors was based off virtues. I remember. Sounds familiar. I just I can't picture it in my head. I just wish I had like some sort of easy access to that because I, I think I went looking for it at one point in time, and I think I found like a later series. But I'm like, no, I want to start from the beginning because I remember waking up at like five o'clock in the morning to try to watch it, and I always just caught like one or two episodes here and there. This it, was back when I was. Used, this was back in the eighties. <laughs> Um, cause for a while it was on, um, Amazon Prime, but it says you can watch it on Tubi. Alright. Do I have a Tubi account? I think I might do. Anyways, moving on. All right, so you guys are done at, at Karen Gordon Cavern and are moving off to uh, Overlake, or what are you, you going to do? I think we're going to see our companions Great. first and update them. Do, 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 do. Uh, you Good. enter uh, the tavern area. The strangers <laughs> are here. And you see... Uh, you see uh, Jim Jar over at a table uh, with a couple other guys, and he's holding some playing cards, and he's like 
seems to be very focused and trying to keep a as good of a poker face as he can. Uh, let's see, who else would be? How much gold? Oh, I'm sorry, does he have like a stack of gold uh, to the side of him or something? Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see how he he was doing. Also, how long have we been awake? Oof. He's not doing so well. <laughs> uh, it's probably been five, six hours. Okay. A few hours in the Dark Lake District doing some shopping. Probably had it had like an hour there for like breakfast. Uh, and then it did take some time to travel down to Thimber Chods and go over to Kerngorn. This is it's a big city. When they say it's a city, they're not kidding. I wonder if I have a uh, if it has a distance tracker. No, I want this. Oh, yeah. Uh, David, uh, Zyra, I did post in the group chat, um, the different Ro Ronin warriors and Saint Thea was. Okay. Yeah. Didn't we start here in the beginning? The lair? Yeah, let's see. We're at the lair. Oh. So. Go. Oomp. Oomp. Somewhere around here, and then back here and then I went over here and this way it was simply known as Knights of the Zodiac for the US version although I remember it being called Ronin Warriors uh, yeah, I, uh, when, Ronin Warriors, when I was watching the show well, no, there's like what he was. Uh, there was Ronin warriors, which is what you're talking about. What uh, Cyro is talking about, like where it was based oh. on the constellations, was Knights of the Zodiac. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, they had a rough estimate. If I remember everything correctly, like what you're thinking. I remember those shows very much as well. So you've traveled about fourteen thousand. 500 and some feet. <laughs> so you've been doing walking around for a while. Yeah. So I would say that if there was a sun, it would probably be like mid afternoon. Um, is Rot here? Like, is he in the lobby or whatever this counts as. Um you don't see anything you don't see him in the tavern. Has there been any like uh, during our travels and stuff, has there been any um fungi? Like in the city. Oh in the city? In the, like, yeah while we're in Grackles do today. Uh, no. It looks pretty clear of any plant life. Okay. Yeah. Just, just remember. Yep. Offered. Well, I'm trying to stay true to my character, and you would look for that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just, just don't which is one of the reasons go. why I, I didn't have you roll for it. 
<laughs> some bitch friend. But also, but since we're in Grecklestug, like he's been able to satisfy stuff outside of Grecklestug. But since we're in here, not sure how often the hunger comes. But <laughs> you're at that point where peckish. You probably could. Yeah, it's a little peckish. I mean, peckish. not. Uh, very, Completely very resistible. Okay. You're like, eh, I could eat something, but okay. Just, just try to keep track of that. Mess up, like where where he's at, because very much wanna. Thank you for reminding me, because I totally forgot. It has been an issue. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That that's also my fault for forgetting about that. So, well, I think I've, for... I've just been going off the fact that every so often, when there was a fun guy around, he would just touch it and satisfy his urges. Yeah. And all. So it was very, very much a. You don't really have to worry about that yeah. since he's getting mm-hmm. his fill on the way. But it's like, we're in a town now. Is this. It, what's going to happen? Yep. Uh, um, I don't want to bite people's faces off. Did, did you Again. punch the stone giant? You punched the stone giant, right? I did. Um. Yeah, I would say that inadvertently, or you didn't quite notice it, but you probably did get a little bit of a snack, uh, which can it kind of help. help. You, you weren't; you, it wasn't enough to kill anybody or anything, yeah. um, but uh, enough which kind of you, you did get kind of a gritty taste. Yeah, it's like. Mm. It's like if you ate a lemon, just a lemon, just just the nothing lemon. else, just just lemon. <laughs> you know, it's like mm, I like the lemon taste, but uh, kind of sour. It, with all this traveling, I would feel Roderick would have learned how to control it, and, like his eating enough, because yeah. he never would want to intentionally kill mm-hmm. any form of life. So he knows how to just take little bits here and from there. everything, so nothing actually. Just being like, like I, if I just take a little bit from here and there, yeah. every once in a while, even from like the fun even guy. when I'm not necessarily hungry or even peckish, you know, yeah, it, I'll, it will I'll be fine and uh, as I go along. Like if yeah. you were you were on the surface and you were traveling through a forest, you might touch a tree for like a couple of seconds. Second. Yeah, gets a little withered, but nothing that's going to kill the tree. That sort of thing. Yeah. So bounce, bounce back from it, and yeah. keep on going with nature. It's like somebody who snacks a lot during the day and is never eats a lot of food, <laughs> just enough to that you get enough calories throughout the day. It's just like instead of like the bumps of the meals, that sort of. Thing. Yeah. Okay. I just. Want to like kind of put that in there that he's been working on making sure that he doesn't do this. He's a snacker. Yeah, he doesn't like killing unless he has to. Like, well, he doesn't like it, but he'll do it if he has to. Yeah. Uh, if anything, as you draw, it would be I would consider it like uh, con-, con save, and which gets harder and harder, and then the worst that it does is backs you unconscious. When you're unconscious, then you're actually. And if you keep drawing while somebody's unconscious, they would ha- essentially have to make death saving throws, but they're not actually taking damage. Yeah. So that's okay. that's the kind of thing that I would think of. Think would be kind of the mechanic. Okay. <clears throat> but like a slight slurp, slurp, a sip, you might say, yeah. um, probably wouldn't be a, if anything hard to see. Not even thorough. But so. Anyways, moving on. Half a hit point. <laughs> Now we talked about uh, life-sucking mechanics. Dimjar is not doing so great. Uh, yeah, he's got he, he's got a few pieces of gold on the table, but uh, everybody else's piles are uh, a bit healthier. Bront is not here. Who he's not else? in the tavern. Yeah. Um. Shushar? Uh, Shushar is not there either. In that room. Who's the creeper guy? The, um... The drow? Like, yeah. 
Like if you go under our Earth. journals and look under um, NPCs, like Sarah's. all nice of them. Sarah's <laughs> is is he in here? Uh, Sarah is not there. Neverlight Grove is north of north of us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You no, do not see stool. Oh, no. Uh, Eldith is in the room, uh, but she's more uh, at the bar drinking. Uh, she might have, like, a some snacks in front of her or something. Uh, uh, Prince Darendel uh, is not here. But, I mean, you don't know where these are. They could be in the rooms. They could be somewhere else. Well, um, I guess I'll go deliver an update to Ront. Uh, you go to back to your room. Oh, not yet. I'm gonna go go to the tavern and get two cups of ale, and okay. then go up. Okay, go down. How, how much? Uh, it, it would just be too silver. There's cheap. I mean, it's a dwarven place. <laughs> it may be Durgar, but they're still dwarves. I don't have any silver pieces. I have gold pieces. Yeah, you can still remove silver from your inventory and we'll give you change. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna... Unless you want to just give her gold. I'm gonna. Uh, she, the bartender I'm, doesn't see it. it is it, it, it's just it's too silver. You give her gold, she'll give you change. Ten silver is one gold piece, right? Correct. So, um, if you subtract one uh, two silver, you would get eight silver back. I will give her one gold piece and expect six more cups of L in the future. Starting in tab, essentially. Yes. <laughs> Putting it down, team. You got a credit. <laughs> I'm going to, uh... Do you say anything about, like, to, like, to us about Jim Jar? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably tell y'all that, uh, he's, he's not, like, doing so good with the game. Um, and then I'm, I'm gonna you... go up to him, uh, give him a nice little pat on the back, and then set 15 gold by his stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, oh, what? hey, thanks! <laughs> I got you now. Back. Just give him a wink. And just, just walk up to my room and look for Ron. All right, you go down to your room. Um, two mugs of ale in your hand. Stuff on an arm. Try to open the door. You open the door and no one's in there. Uh, any. I'll, I'll set the L down on something. Just, uh, like, look around, see if he's been in here since he left. This uh, the bed is definitely not made. Uh, his axe isn't there. Uh, he, his pack is there. Can I look at it? Yeah. What's in it? Let's see. As I'm just sipping on my cup. Yeah, it tastes like water. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would. It, there's a hunting trap in there. A bedroll. A uh, mess kit. Uh, some rope, a uh, tinderbox, and a torch, and a water skin. 
Okay, so nothing interesting. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, no, he's probably brain. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, it says it says traveler's clothes, and like, no, he's actually wearing. <laughs> That's that's what he's wearing. Uh, well, um, uh, it, oh, and his, he, his, he has. There's, it, there are five javelins there. Not in the bag, but you, you've known him to carry javelins. Does anyone else want to do anything while I'm, before I? do something else? Uh, Sarah's still kind of interested in this whole Thieves Guild talk, so she's just kind of trying to listen in on people's conversations, see if something comes up about that. Probably, like, once we go talk to them, I'll need to do a little shopping, just because I still have stuff for us to sell. Um... Hey, you sold everything first night you were here. No, sold all the st- sold took gave him all the stuff that was required to be given to him. Um, no, we, you didn't. But yeah, I get what you mean. But we still have like the like from the other stuff that we like later on found mm-hmm. like the zircons, gold bracelets. Um, some of the we still have some equipment like daggers, hand cross bows. That kind of stuff. Uh, well, okay. Before we go off and do that, I'm gonna try to continue finding Ront and Stool and everyone else. I guess, um, mostly Ron. I don't really. All right. So, really <clears throat> Goldborn's Lair is not. It's you know how hotels most hotels. Uh, major hotels, at least, uh, uh, have basically a some sort of restaurant and uh, uh, foyer, and uh, has the rooms. But they also have some recreational areas, um, like a pool, <laughs> that sort of thing. Well, the Goldborn Lair does have an area, have a recreational area uh, outside of the tavern. Um, out down a, a hall which goes around the uh, b- by the kitchen it goes out into the back and there is a fenced in yard uh which looks like it's a place where where they, it has the fighting pit uh as well as for lack of a better word training dummies <laughs> and you find Ront uh back there uh swinging his axe uh, at one of these uh, training dummies. I'll just stand there and watch, drinking my ale for a bit. And you also see a little mushroom person uh, sitting on a bench uh, on the sideline watching Ront. I'll, at go, I'll go sit next to Stool. And... What you doing, buddy? And by the way, I just figured out after doing some some research, he doesn't have to do the report sports to talk. <laughs> well, he's been doing it, so why not? Yeah. Um, he says, says oh, I'm just watching Ron. Uh, also, um, I've been kind of trying something else, else out. Watch this! And all of a sudden, the mushroom... Disappears. And where he was is a little mouse. And he like crawls onto your leg. <laughs> and just kind of like runs around and he kind of looks up at you and goes, squeak, squeak. Where's Borcat? No, Borcat's he- up on his shoulder. Uh, 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 he kind of like jumps down onto your other leg and looks and kind of sniffs at, at him. And he kind of like gives a little, little twerk. If it happens, it happens. Uh, and okay. the, then uh, 
the mouse crawls off your leg and starts running around and jumps off the, the side of the bench and starts running around. The little boar cat kind of like chases after him. But it seems to be more of like a playful thing than it is he's trying to hunt the mouse. Well, they're having fun. I'll go over to Ron and uh, try my best not to get hit by the axe. Uh, give me a dexterity save. Night. Save? Yes. Ah, uh, sh- <laughs> Womp. Womp womp. All right. So, <laughs> you, you, you start going up to Ront. Having not said anything, he seems to be in, in his motion. He swings back and uh, clocks you uh, in the face uh, with his elbow as he's trying to to bring back his axe. Uh, Let's see here. Save Uh, or something. uh, I'm just trying to figure out uh, what we're going to do for the damage. Uh, You take uh, four points of uh, bludgeoning damage. Your nose kind of feels like it broke. But you touch it and being a uh, a medical professional, you realize no, it just hurts really bad. It just feels like it broke. No, he he. After it happens, he he turns around and says, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Are you okay? Uh, and he, he he goes up to you and kisses your nose. Oh, well, I have two two cups in my hand, so I can't really like hold um, my nose. <laughs> It, you do not have two cups in your hands because after it happened, you dropped them and they kind of like ah. spilled onto the ground. Fuck. Uh, okay, well, I'm holding my nose, trying to stop the bleeding. Um, and I, I, at the same time, I say, I'm fine. Uh, we're back from the city and we're we're gathering in the uh, tavern. No, and, um, we're they, doing something. Uh, no, we're, we're just you know just talking, updating. It, it's. Uh, are, are we finally going to get out of here? I mean, I'd love to take you to the surface. Oh, uh, probably not yet. Not not this day. Probably. No, I suppose we got that little rock guy. Where, or stool guy? Uh, <laughs> what is your familiar doing with that mouse? Uh, he's just chasing it. Don't don't worry about them. The the mouse kind of poofs and uh, uh, stool appears again, and then uh, and and it happens just as little Borkad's making kind of like a little pounce. At the mouse, and he kind of runs and ends up landing on uh, Stool's chest, and he just kind of grabs Borkad, who starts uh, and starts giggling. I still hate him. Well, Borkad isn't giggling, but uh, Stool is giggling in his little like sort of way. Statement still stands. <laughs> Were we going to take him to Neverlight Grove? Honestly, I don't even know. I've kind of been checking out this whole journey. Um, but I'll tell you when I find out. Okay. Well, I'll be here. Doesn't seem like there's much interest in the city anyways. Right. Right. Uh... Uh, there is a pit fighting competition later today, though. I'm gonna enjoy gonna enjoy doing that. <laughs> you just kind of like, win? like it does this kind of like little boxing sort of thing. When does this happen? Uh, a couple hours. Oh, okay. I'll I will try my best to be here. Say I'll after they one. they 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 serve dinner, which in a couple hours. I wouldn't want to miss that. So. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be back. 
some time. All right. You take care. He kisses you. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that L on the ground is yeah. yours. Feel free to. Oh, well, take. I mean, it's, it's kind of like seeping into the rock now. Yes. I really, I can't really drink that. So, well, it's your it's money, yours, I suppose. <laughs> I'll present, pre- fuck. Um, no press to digitate. <laughs> The the L off the ground. Clean up after yourself. And I'll walk off, hey. finding the group. <laughs> with, with, with the thought of, next time I approach Ron when he's doing strenuous activity, might want to say something before you get close. <laughs> Still holding my nose, trying to stop the bleeding. I don't want to... Uh, Waste a spell slot on this. On <laughs> four hit points. I mean, it, it 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 bleeds just a little bit, but it doesn't really like it's not gushing or anything. It it yeah. stops relatively quickly. <laughs> but somebody looking at you will definitely tell that you just got punched in the face. <laughs> ah. Sorry, I was just able to literally add everything from party inventory, the little note, and into the bag of holding slash my backpack. Nice. Uh... Clearly, I know what I'm holding. Just go to my one one sheet. Hmm. Um, the stool uh, turns to you as you're you're going out. Uh, are are you all back? Uh, yes. Yay! Well, and he runs down the hall. Okay. Uh, Roderick, if you're still in the tavern in Syra, uh, you'll see uh, your little Mykonid, uh friend uh, come running down the hall that Lassiter went down. I would be in my room moving things around into the bag of holding and oh, okay. organizing. <laughs> you went rising. So he, he comes running back in the tavern. And Syra, are you back in, or still in the tavern? Yeah, I was, I was trying to listen in on people's conversations. Okay, go ahead I'm and roll me a perception check. Oh. Perception. Eh. Oh. I hear nothing. Yeah, it's it seems like everyday tavern talk between the various different people. Some people are are just there joking around with their friends, and um, uh, as the, you do see a couple of uh, uh, people who must be on a date or something, and one of them whis- whispers something in the ear, and the other person giggles, that sort of thing. Uh, Jim Jar. What's Jim Jar doing? After getting that boost to his, uh, funds. Yeah. Uh, Jim Jar has won, won a few, won a few hands. He has, he has definitely gotten more gold now. So he's, he's on his, on his route up. Maybe not doing super great at the moment, but he's doing better. You've, you've heard him. Uh, uh, give it cheer a couple times uh, after winning a hand and chuckling like ah, ha, 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 and gold to himself. They're not. It's it's not high stakes, but he's got got a little bit more coin. Uh, but otherwise, nothing that seems very important. Might be a good place to stop then, because it's time. Oh yeah, it is, is that time. So we're ending with the Wayfaring Strangers. Now our heroes have a group name. Yay! I love it. <laughs> and I passed. Yeah. Well, I also didn't start till night, like thirty minutes later. Yeah. So only a couple hours, but. All right. We will see you all next week. Thank you for joining us. Uh, is it Thursday yet? 
Good night. Yeah. Yep. Have a good night. Uh, did anyone ever hear back from...